and we have another function as we said for which the central bank came into being in the first place bank supervision the general people ordinary people put their deposit their savings in a commercial bank and the we have to see how the commercial banks are running we do it through bank supervision the role of this central bank is increasing becoming more critical becoming more important with the advent of commercial banks with their smart behavior and sometimes there are many countries who have destination of foreign banks and the central bank is a little lagging behind compared to foreign commercial banks they bring in new technology new in innovation and the central bank has to follow them to try to regulate them to try to bring them into orbit of regulation in many countries including our one there is overseas banking no hmm. so we have to be very careful very concerned with all those banks as well uh, there is basel agreement on bank supervision that is an international requirement requirement all banks all commercial banks of the world should achieve that much of requirement to run their business if we don't agree to the basel agreement if we don't follow basel agreement foreign bankers will not like to have correspondence business with our local banks so we have to reach that standard to do business with maybe us banks german banks so this is a requirement of course we get some breathing time to achieve that target regarding capital requirement strict banks supervision and to deal with another problem which we call npl non performing loan suppose you give loan and you have maybe 20% of non performing loan foreign banks of us will not like to deal with you because 20% of your asset are toxic they will like that you bring your non performing loan down to 1% or maybe less than 1% there are many countries where the npl is really very high our is one we had a discussion in bibm some weeks back nepal and also bhutan they have lesser npl than our country so that is a concern of the central bank that is a concern of the policy makers in this country including the government so we have to bring down that npl so the basel agreement basel agreement they want that we should have risk based supervision on the loans and advances made by our, our banks making that you make a loan to a person to a company where your risk is 100% then you have to keep a provision of 100% if it is less than that you have to keep it down so for each and every loan you have to keep your provision so that you don't run you don't have to face the problem of run we have brought some other uh, agency in in place in our country that is called credit rating agency when you make a loan to an individual or a company you have to see how much they can take credit from a commercial bank or a from a formal sector this credit agency came into being maybe 3 or 4 years back before that we do, didn't have this credit rating agency in our country maybe sudan or philippines maybe have all those things so these are the instruments or these are the agencies who have come into place to take care of good loan and bringing non performing loan down we have many new regulations new classification techniques new laws in our country in 1993 we had one financial institutions act which is done for the non bank financial institutions making leasing companies investment companies and 
the latest guideline for bank supervision or the loan classification came only just in 1989. There are some other instruments, some other regulations in place now. That is Bankruptcy Act 1997, Money Loan Codes 2003. The government brought all those things to have a good and sound financial system in the country so that depositors' money is not lost and confidence of our international partners are not lost. We have prudential regulation. We issue directives to the bank how the banks will be run, how the directors of a commercial bank, a private commercial bank, will be selected, and how they have to run their banks, and how they can be removed if they perform poorly or perform against the interest of the depositors or perform against the guidance given by the central bank, some other regulatory agencies like another Securities and Exchange Corp Corporation. There are many different agencies to take care of the interest of the depositors. Because if there be a run of a commercial bank, the whole system has the risk of collapsing. If one bank or even branch of a bank does not have enough of cash to feed the depositors, then there will be some problem in that bank and that will spread to other banks as well. For this reason, maybe the government in our country does not like any bank to fall. But there is some sort of different culture in other countries in US. Here in USA, there are some branch banks. Suppose for Dhaka, there is one bank. For Chitang, there is one bank. So one bank is saying first they don't care. There are some other banks in the country. But we have this risk. And people in our country, they have a culture that no bank should fall. The government will never allow any bank to run to fall. And as we are a poor country, uh, many people in our Bangladesh, they don't have access to financial services, banking services. So we have taken a policy of financial inclusion. Anybody and everybody in the country living should have the access to banking system, meaning deposit, loan, remittance, financial transaction, everything. So financial inclusion, suppose there are many banks who cannot reach to the remotest of the remote areas like small islands, we call it chore. So we have asked them to have some sort of small banking unit, we call them agent bank. So with agent bank, you, do, you don't move your whole branch there, but you have put some two or three people there with some um, electronic services so that you can cater to the needs of the people around there to take deposit and make loan and also to make remittance services to all those remote people. And you know that we had some cheat mall keyboard in this thing? We had some cheat mall, cheat mall keyboard in this We have some areas within Bangladesh area, but that was the area of India. We call it cheat mall in Bangla. So uh, for some years, they didn't have the banking facility from Bangladesh. They didn't have the banking facility from India. So immediately after we got them formally, they became the part of sovereign People's Republic of Bangladesh. And immediately after that, we asked some banks to open their branches. And Socialist Time Bank opened their branches there. Anybody from Socialist Time Bank here? Yes, Socialist Time Bank went there. They opened their branch in Chitmahal, of those areas in Greater Rampur Division. And we did another directives from the central bank. Suppose mm, you go to a bank, there is a form to fill up where you have to say your gender. Eh? You say male. And when she goes, she says female. There are some other people living in this country who is neither a male nor a female. We call them hijra. And transgender? Eh? 
common gender. We can co com call them people of common gender or transgender. We, we made a circular from the central bank that those people should also be allowed to have access to the financial services. So now you cannot regret a hisra to open an account. No, you cannot sit. If he or she makes a complaint, you will be taken into account. So we did these things for Chitmahal and those hisra people to do some sort of financial inclusion. There are many people who cannot take the benefit of uh, loans from your bank. So we ask them, we ask the banks to open some sort of windows to make loans for the SMEs, small SMEs and other very small people, small business people. We have another responsibility to maintain our par value of Dhaka. We call it exchange rate, exchange rate management. When the price of our par value taka should be commensurate with the growth of our economy and we should not be very we should not allow very volatile situation in the foreign exchange market as i said when the price of dollar goes up we increase the supply of dollar in the economy when it goes down we bring them and this is helps in our reserve stock also and we get this foreign exchange through official mechanism through banks when it comes through official channel this is, this becomes a part of the reserve of our country and you know all these foreign exchange coming formally are the asset of the government and the Bangladesh bank looks after this arrangement if you have a dollar this is the property of the government, not you. You can get only Bangladeshi taka. Suppose this lady coming from Philippines, she brings some US dollar. When it comes in the inside country, this becomes part of the government, asset of the government, not this bank, not this hotel. And she can get only Bangladeshi taka. When she goes out, she can buy US dollar formally. And this is reflected in our reserve position. It goes up, it goes down. So Bangladesh bank takes some steps to make foreign exchange coming smoothly, foreign exchange going smoothly, and no money laundering is done through these things. Because if our money goes without any check and balance, that may create some problem in our reserve. And we may be in a poorer condition, at, at least in that account, and our economy will suffer. Now comes the payment system. And for making this payment system smooth and suitable, we have this money, this taka, taka coins and taka notes. Bangladesh Bank is the only agency responsible in the country to print bank notes to mint coins. And printed fresh notes are distributed. We, we print note. Before printing note, there are some exercises how we really print note, from where we print note, and what sort of note we will print, what design we will have this. These things will be discussed in our later sessions by other experts. I can say only that the Bangladesh Bank is responsible for minting coins and printing notes. And before we circulate to the economy through mutual trust bank or other banks. This is simply a stationary to us. It has no value. When we put some Bangladeshi taka in her account or in socialist banks limited account, then it becomes really currency or money. So as we circulate this fresh note with uses of those notes by people thousand and hundreds times it becomes torn or non issuable or people don't accept. Then we bring them back, we count them, then we circulate something against those things again. So this cash management is really important for our country and for your countries as well. 
and for this cash management this course is being hold, held here we mainly distribute our currency through a government bank sonali bank we have chest sub chests we have our bangladesh bank branches all over the country through them we distribute notes genuine notes fresh issuable non issuable and we have to do many exercises to distribute those notes bring them back and examine here and reissue them and sometimes replace them and when some money or notes comes to us and it cannot be circulated meaning that consumers or users like you may not accept it we just destroy them and we replace those amount by some other notes and it is a problem for us how do we do with those destroyed notes we burn them or we make brick difficult because when we burn there comes bad smokes which cause some sort of environmental challenge and in many countries they make it bricks they call it brickwork and they use in a different way there are some small islands who do some sort of land reclamation with these destroyed notes i don't know what the philippines or maldives are doing because they need to uh, reclaim lands from the sea as i said destruction of notes needs some procedure to follow by the central banks and we have also authorized the commercial banks to replace or, or should say to pay value to some of some of the notes they can and they get the value from the central bank again, lately and then there are some ingenuine notes or fake notes in the economy we can simply say from bangladesh bank that those ingenuine note or fake notes are not issued by the bangladesh bank so we are not responsible for those things since this is not my issue this is not my baby why should i bother why should i be bothered for those ingenuine or, or bad notes because we are responsible for making payment system in place smooth payment system in the country so if there is anything which hampers in any way the smooth functioning or uh, the smooth um, operation of the payment system the government has asked to take some steps so we are here for organizing this course in genuine note fake note and also we have our intelligence agency because this is a criminal activity and bangladesh bank is not responsible of course but they have some sort of role to play to take care of these fake notes in genuine notes in many countries the central bank has some sort of uh, agency or section not agency in central bank has some sort of office uh department who take care of these ingenuine notes they examine them and finally say this is ingenuine and they pay or they don't pay the bill and they pay and they hand over this player or the criminal to the police for further law enforcement we are trying to establish one such unit in our central bank with the help of german central bank but ultimately did not give up successful and on many occasions if there are high value note fake note in place then the government has to take recourse to demonetization of those notes in india you have seen that some few days back they demonetized 500 and 1000 taka 1000 rupee notes this is done uh, for taking care of the bad money uh, money laundering terrorist financing for the central bank's purpose we do it just to check the ingenuine note or fake note 
but in India they did it for some other reasons, that is for economic reasons of the government, not for the fake note or ingenuine notes. And you see, the fake notes are, can be easily circulated to the people who do not really or all the time use these notes. The Rohingya refugees coming inside Bangladesh, they don't know our note, eh? 1,000 taka note or 500 taka note. So if you are a bad man, then you can give them those ingenuine notes and that can be circulated. They, those people can be cheated easily. The foreigners coming here, they should be very careful to have those notes. Because you have not seen this Bangladeshi note before. As no, no, you, you won't ask runner is care if you just change it from a genuine money changer. But the most risky, the most risky note is US dollar. In this sense, uh, she is actually worried. Uh, she is actually worried. In airport, she got a uh, hundred thousand, and she let uh, it to me and said, "Nisha, is that really a good one?" I said, "Yes, it is a hundred bucks. You can use it. No problem." He said, "Is it really okay?" She is still confused. I said, "No, it's okay. It's a good note here. You can use it. Oh, fine. It's not a fake note. Still, it's not torn and mutilated. You can use it." I had such experience in Indonesia. I came back, I was coming back, they gave me a note from the hotel. When I came to the airport, I gave it to the driver, he did not accept it. I said, yes, I took it from the hotel, then I forgot the name of the hotel, then I called another man whom I know. He said, yes, this is genuine, but it has become Batil, it has become Batil Yes, it was declared illegal from that date. You can exchange it, but you cannot exchange it in the airport. So that of money has gone. And uh, that happened for me in Indonesia. And also I had some British pounds in my possession which were not in circulation because the government banned it after that period of time. But there was some time given that during this period you can just exchange it. Then I gave it to somebody and he just changed it for me. So these things happen in many economies, many countries because this is the part of the whole game. But people suffer, people have to take this suffering no problem. I remember once, mm, that was in 1992, somebody came to me with some Saudi real. This is genuine or not genuine? I said, I cannot say that this is genuine. Oh, you are the currency officer, you are the central bank. Then I said, my reply was, we did not issue this Saudi currency. And Bangladesh Bank or Bangladesh government cannot take responsibility of this note. We have no authority to say, whether it's genuine or ingenuine. The only way I can suggest you in a very, very personal way, personal capacity, you try to go to the Saudi embassy here and ask them if they can help. So uh, that was a, that was not a smart reply, I must say. That was not a genuine reply, I must say, because since this paper, he has brought to do some sort of financial transaction, to do some sort of or, or a part of payment system, I should give him the best reply possible, but which I could not. There are some um, machines or technology in our police department who can verify for sure currencies of many countries. And this IIC, IICT, Maybe they also can verify the notes of many countries, at least for the biggest countries. They are thinking to develop a note verification center for all those notes, but this needs some sort of authority from the regulatory authorities or law enforcement authorities. 
and they must be very capable of handling those north. Suppose the north of small islands like Maldives, small islands like Vanuatu, you have to be equipped with all those features, security features and all those technology. And this is a huge investment you must do. So everything we are doing to run a smooth payment system in the country. And this is very important. Sometimes we try to avoid our responsibility, which is not really praiseworthy. We use money and we love to have more and more of it. We are all here to have more and more of money, to get more, more promotion, more increment, and more money. But the issue is, suppose you get one lakh taka a month, and you have one 1,000 taka fake, your income this month comes down to 99,000, and you are also having the risk of this caught by the police. So let us be safe with these currency notes. Let us keep our economy running smoothly. Let us keep our all friends who use this currency safe and system going on smoothly. Thank you very much. Thank you. So if you have any points to make, I'll try to respond. But there is one issue and challenge in many countries. How do we really dispose of the mm, distracted notes? How do we do this? Because this creates some sort of environmental hazard. Sometimes this is public noises. This is an issue. I asked it to our German speakers. They gave a re reply which I was not convinced. Because they said that you make it flat, hmm, some like brick, and you make presentation it to the people coming to your central bank for visit. So we have so much of notes and that much of number of South bricks. People will not like books. But I have seen in the literature that some island countries, they are doing it from land reclamation. But this cannot be used for even cooking, burning, because it just get, gives bad smell, maybe hazardous to health. Anyway, thank you very much. Start.